So there's another command uh, that's like an even better version of STP. It's called rsync. Uh, the syntax is somewhat the same, but what rsync does is it's more intelligent. rsync doesn't copy individual files. I mean, you can copy individual files, but rsync you can point in a directory on both sides, and it'll basically it does what we call a differential copy. So it only copies the files that have changed. So if you have like a big source tree, like a whole bunch of files that are part of a big program, and you're not using git, which would be the right way to do this, but you need to like copy them from one machine to another, rsync becomes really handy, especially if you already have a copy on the other machine. Because then rsync is essentially only going to copy the files that are newer or that have changed or that are new. It's not going to really copy everything. So if I like have my music collection on two different machines and it's like hundreds of gigabytes, uh, I wouldn't, and I wanted to, I like, added a new file over here, but I wanted to sync them, I wouldn't, I mean, I could either go and find the exact file I added and copy it manually, but that's a pain in the ass, or I could recopy everything, but that's going to take forever, or I can use rsync, which is the best of both worlds. It's going to look at both tabs, it's going to say, I only need to copy the things that are different, and it's going to copy those. Uh, the syntax is similar, so, I don't really have a good example for what to do here. Uh, I'm going to make a directory called test, let's see, test, and I'm going to touch a series of files. So, six. Okay, so I have a folder that has basically these four empty files on it. Uh, I want to copy it up to the server. So, I'm going to go back up one level. So, whereas SCP, you tend to point at individual files, rsync, you can point at individual files, but you tend to point at directories because you're using it to do a whole bunch of files, not just one. So if I wanted to copy these to the server, the command would be rsync. Um, then the source again. So in this case, the source would just be test. So rsync has a few little intricacies, namely whether or not you include this trailing slash here is going to change a little bit what happens. If you don't include the trailing slash, it's going to copy the entire test folder up to wherever the destination is. If I do include the trailing slash, it's going to copy basically everything inside the test folder, is how it normally does that. So this is going to dictate whether or not I get another copy of the test folder, or whether or not I just get the files inside of it. Uh, the problem is, if you do it one way one time and another way the other time, you tend to get, you do something silly like you copy a copy of the folder into a copy of the folder, and it doesn't sync properly, and so on and so forth. So just be consistent. Uh, in this case, we'll go ahead and leave it off, because we just want to copy the entire folder. Then, same thing as normal, so I would do my username. Colon, and then where I want to copy it. And again, we just want to stick it directly in our home directory there. So, if I do this, so uh, this by itself will probably work, but that's not how we often use rsync. Uh, rsync has a series of flags that you can put in front of it. Uh, this is a pretty standard set. You can look up the man page what these all do. The A is the archive flag. What that says is copy this folder and all of its attributes like directly as it is here. So whoever the user, like the users, the permissions, all of that extra info is going to get copied where it's going to get synced as well as the actual files. If you don't use this, it's going to basically change the ownership, change the permissions, so on and so forth to this user with the defaults on this machine. So you tend to want to use the A flag. It basically just perfectly preserves all the information about the file. Uh, the V flag is just for verbose. That means tell me every file as you copy it. You don't need that, but if you want to keep track of what's going on, it's handy. And the Z flag means compress it. In addition to being differential, our sync can basically compress on both sides, which can save you quite a bit of uh, time depending on what you're doing. Serenading for another week. Um, so the Z flag just compresses it. Uh, in this case, I mean, it's four empty files, so it's going to go really fast. But if these were like big files that compress well, uh, so that tends to be things like big data sets and stuff like that will often compress well, then the Z flag can say can speed it up considerably. Because not only am I only copying exactly what I need, but I can compress it from one side and depress on the other. If you're worried about network cap, it'll cut down on the amount of network traffic you're sending as well. So I'm going to stick those flags in there and go ahead and run this. And the usual thing. Cool. So you'll see, 
I get this series of things here. The verbose flag is telling me each file has a copies it, and then I get some extra info at the end. Now, if I run it a second time, nothing at all should happen because our sync is intelligent. And the second time I run it, the second time I run it, it sends nothing at all, so on and so forth. This is what we'd expect. All of the files were up there from the first time. I hadn't changed anything. There was nothing needed to sync. If I change one of those files, And then if I run rsync again, you will see it only copies that one file and then it copies the new backup file that Emacs created because I didn't remove the copy. So it makes sense. So it works the same way again. I can switch it in other directions. I don't want to do it, you can take my word for it, but if I SSH into this machine right now, I would see a test directory in my home folder and it would have all these files in it. And if I went and did a bunch of work on that machine and I wanted to copy all my files back, I could just reverse these arguments and would copy everything back when I was done. You can actually use rsync on your local machine, and it can be helpful for all the same reasons it's normally helpful, right? If you have an external hard drive that you're keeping, I mean, a lot of people use rsync to basically do backups. So if you have an external hard drive and you have a script that once a day calls rsync to essentially copy a new copy of all of your data to that hard drive, um, it'll do that and then it'll only copy what you need. There's some additional flags to rsync, so by default rsync doesn't delete anything. So if I went into this folder and deleted the one and ran rsync, it wouldn't do anything at all. I can add an additional flag, I think it's maybe dash dash delete, I can look at the man page, you can look at the man page, but if I want rsync to essentially make any changes in the current directory to the other directory, including deletes, you have to give it an extra flag and then it will do that as well. Um, that's just for safety, right, you don't want deleting things unless you really know what you're doing, because if you type this in wrong with the delete flag, then it's going to delete everything on the remote server because it's going to find an empty file or something. So, but if you do want to perfect, perfectly keep two folders in sync, including deletes, there's just nothing flag you have to have. So, how to copy a single or a set of files to multiple systems? Um, I don't know if it can. Does it like you need to write a script and run it or? Yeah, so you would, you would write a script that basically changed you would use a variable for that second part, and you would change it, you have a loop in the script, you would change it each time. Uh, I think by default it only supports a single, this, the fact that this isn't plural would lead me to believe that it only supports a single destination. So yeah, you can stick it in a script and do multiple. Um, if you stick it in a script, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you do what we're about to do now, which is, if it's in a script, you don't want it asking your password every time. So you need to set up what's called SSH keys, which is what we'll do now, that basically gives your computer, I mean, uh, it gives your, you've done this before, but it gives your computer an automated way to connect to, uh, to securely connect without you having to type in your password. But yeah, if you wanted to basically take one set of files and spread them over a whole bunch of systems, a little bash script would be the best way to do that. You just list all the systems at the top of the bash script, have a for loop that iterates through them one at a time, and just repeatedly calls this, but changes the second half each time. So I'll just get the password. How do you what? I'll just get the password. Uh, we'll get to that, we'll do it now. 